there have been people that say, oh, well, my credit card told me that my score was X, Y, Z. And then I go to a lender and they said my score was different. If you want to see the scores that the banks see, this is the way to do it. And you have two options. One is myfico.com, as I just mentioned. And then you have Identity IQ, Score IQ. I'll put the links down in the description below to make it easier for you. In today's video, we're going to talk about the four mistakes that first time home buyers make. Mistake number one is not knowing your mortgage scores before you actually have a lender look at your credit. This is very important. And to do this, all you have to do, you have two different options. You can go to either myfico.com and get their advanced credit plan. And you don't have to keep it if you don't want to. So you can just get it for one month. I believe it's about $30 right now at the time of this video. And then that's going to show you your mortgage scores. Now, when you're looking to get a pre-approval for a mortgage, you have three scores from each bureau. Well, technically one score from each bureau, TransUnion, Equifax, and Experian. So how it works with mortgages is they drop the highest score and they drop the lowest score. Whatever score is left over is going to be what they call your middle score. So let's say, for example, you have three scores. One score is 580, one score is 620, and the other score is 640. Remember, they dropped the highest score, so 640 is gone. They dropped the lowest score, so 580 is gone. That leaves 620 available, okay? That's going to be your middle score, all right? Now, if you don't know your mortgage scores, then what's going to end up happening is, and don't get me wrong, you don't necessarily have to know them per se, like remember them, but you need to make sure that before you have a lender take a look at them, that you do meet the qualifications. Because for example, there have been people that say, oh, well, my credit card told me that my score was X, Y, Z. And then I go to a lender and they said my score was different. If you want to see the scores that the banks see, this is the way to do it. And you have two options. One is myfico.com, as I just mentioned, and then you have identity IQ, score IQ. I'll put the links down in the description below to make it easier for you. Number two is getting home buying advice from someone who's never bought a home. Now, don't get me wrong. There are some real estate agents, lenders, people in the mortgage industry that are not homeowners, but their job is at least being around that and knowing how to get someone home loan. So those are probably the only exceptions, okay? But other than that, it's usually friends, family, neighbors, coworkers, whomever, and you're essentially getting home buying advice from someone who's never bought a home. So sometimes people that have never bought homes may say things like, oh, but now is a horrible time to buy a home, and they have no idea what the pros or cons are. Not saying that they're wrong or right, but they don't know the pros and cons because it's not their industry. Some people will say, oh, well, you know, there's this down payment assistance program that you probably can get. And again, it could be bad information. So you want to make sure that you get home buying advice from someone who not only has either bought a home or someone who is in the real estate industry. Number three, looking at homes before you have your pre-approval letter. Now, it's not the end of the world. That's why they have open houses. But you have to ask yourself, what happens if I like this house? What happens if I want to move forward with this house? And then you're going to say, OK, what are my options going to be? That's why it's strongly recommended that before you start looking at homes, it's not necessarily a waste of time per se. It's more so at the end of you looking at it, the person that's showing you the home is going to ask you a question. It's going to say, hey, what do you want to do? And it's not that you want to say, oh, well, I'm not interested because if you are interested, then it's going to be, hey, let me go in and get my pre-approval going. But competition is always going to be there. So if you want to go forward and you know put in an offer on the home, it's assuming that you like it, you want to be in a position to do so because you never know know what's going to be on the table. The seller may be offering a $10,000 credit off the you know, off the price. The seller may be offering a $5,000 closing cost credit to reduce the amount of money you need to bring at closing, but you won't know that because you don't qualify. Number four, going to your bank for a home loan. Now, I know this sounds crazy because you're probably thinking, well, Calvin, I have my checking account with this bank. I have my savings account with this bank. I have a credit card with this bank. But most banks that are usually what I like to call drive-by banks, those are banks that you can drive by, you know, Chase, Bank of America, Fifth Third, so on and so forth. Those are usually the bigger banks. Bigger banks don't necessarily specialize or care too much about customer service. And you'd be surprised. You're going to be just a number in most of those cases because most of those people that go through those bigger banks, they get a ton of applications per day and it's straight business. There, you may feel that there's not a relationship being built. I strongly recommend that you ask the real estate agent that you're working with or considering to work with and ask them for a lender recommendation. If once you do that, that way is someone who is looking to do business with you. Someone who is, now there's no guarantee that they're not going to be that customer service is going to be there and things of that sort. However, but when you work with a good real estate agent, agent, good people know good people. So good real estate agents know good lenders. Same is true as bad real estate agents or lazy real estate agents with no lazy lenders, right? <laughs> but either way, if you're able to get that recommendation, that makes the process a lot easier, especially when you're looking to go into homeownership. If you like this video, you're most definitely going to like the next one. I'll see you there.